The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. It happened, as they traveled east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they lived there. They said one to another, Come, let's make brick and burn them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they used tar for mortar. They said, Come, let's build us a city and a tower, whose top reaches to the sky, and let's make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad on the surface of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. The Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing will be withheld from them which they intend to do. Come, let's go down, and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there on the surface of all the earth. They stopped building the city. Therefore the name of it was called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of all the earth there. From there the Lord scattered them abroad on the surface of all the earth. This is the history of the generations of Shem. Shem was one hundred years old and became the father of Arpachshad two years after the flood. Shem lived after he became the father of Arpachshad five hundred years and became the father of sons and daughters. Arpachshad lived thirty-five years and became the father of Shelah. Arpachshad lived after he became the father of Shelah four hundred three years and became the father of sons and daughters. Shelah lived thirty years and became the father of Eber. And Shelah lived after he became the father of Eber four hundred three years and became the father of sons and daughters. Eber lived thirty-four years and became the father of Peleg. Eber lived after he became the father of Peleg four hundred thirty years, and became the father of sons and daughters. Peleg lived thirty years, and became the father of Reu. Peleg lived after he became the father of Reu two hundred nine years, and became the father of sons and daughters. Reu lived thirty-two years, and became the father of Serug. Reu lived after he became the father of Serug two hundred seven years, and became the father of sons and daughters. Serug lived thirty years, and became the father of Nahor. Serug lived after he became the father of Nahor two hundred years, and became the father of sons and daughters. Nahor lived twenty-nine years, and became the father of Terah. Nahor lived after he became the father of Terah one hundred nineteen years, and became the father of sons and daughters. Terah lived seventy years, and became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now this is the history of the generations of Terah. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran became the father of Lot. Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his birth, in Ur of the Chaldees. Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, who was also the father of Iscah. Sarai was barren. She had no child. Terah took Abram his son, Lot the son of Haran his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. They went forth from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. They came to Haran and lived there. The days of Terah were two hundred five years. Terah died in Haran. He called to himself his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every sickness. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, the first Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, John his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Jesus sent these twelve out and charged them, saying, Don't go among the Gentiles, and don't enter into any city of the Samaritans. Rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. Freely you received, so freely give. Don't take any gold, nor silver, nor brass in your money belts. Take no bag for your journey, neither two coats, nor shoes, nor staff, for the laborer is worthy of his food. Into whatever city or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you go on. As you enter into the household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come on it. But if it isn't worthy, let your peace return to you. Whoever doesn't receive you nor hear your words as you go out of that house or that city, shake off the dust from your feet. Most assuredly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils, and in their synagogues they will scourge you. Yes, and you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, don't be anxious how or what you will say, for it will be given you in that hour what you will say. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Brother will deliver up brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. You will be hated by all men for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee into the next. For most assuredly, I tell you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man has come. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be like his teacher and the servant like his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household? Therefore don't be afraid of them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, and hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light, and what you hear whispered in the ear, proclaim on the housetops. Don't be afraid of those who kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Aren't two sparrows sold for an Assyrian? Not one of them falls on the ground apart from your father's will, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Therefore don't be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Don't think that I came to send peace on the earth. I didn't come to send peace but a sword. For I came to set a man at odds against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's foes will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me isn't worthy of me. He who doesn't take his cross and follow after me isn't worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. Whoever gives one of these little ones just a cup of cold water to drink in the name of a disciple, most assuredly, I tell you, he will in no way lose his reward. Chapter 10 Now while Ezra prayed and made confession, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there was gathered together to him out of Israel a very great assembly of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. Shechaniah the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have married foreign women of the peoples of the land. Yet now there is hope for Israel concerning this thing. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord and of those who tremble at the commandment of our God, 
and let it be done according to the law. Arise, for the matter belongs to you, and we are with you. Be of good courage and do it. Then Ezra arose and made the chiefs of the priests, the Levites, and all Israel to swear that they would do according to this word. So they swore. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God, and went into the chamber of Jehohanan, the son of Elishib. And when he came there he ate no bread, nor drank water, for he mourned because of the trespass of them of the captivity. They made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to all the children of the captivity, that they should gather themselves together to Jerusalem, and that whoever didn't come within three days, according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance would be forfeited, and himself separated from the assembly of the captivity. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together to Jerusalem within the three days. It was the ninth month, on the twentieth day of the month, and all the people sat in the broad place before the house of God, trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. Ezra the priest stood up and said to them, You have trespassed and have married foreign women to increase the guilt of Israel. Now therefore make confession to the Lord, the God of your fathers, and do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the peoples of the land and from the foreign women. Then all the assembly answered with a loud voice, As you have said concerning us, so must we do. But the people are many, and it is a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand outside. Neither is this a work of one day or two, for we have greatly transgressed in this matter. Let now our princes be appointed for all the assembly, and let all those who are in our cities who have married foreign women come at appointed times, and with them the elders of every city and the judges of it, until the fierce wrath of our God be turned from us, until this matter be settled. Only Jonathan the son of Asahel and Josiah the son of Tikvah stood up against this matter, and Meshulam and Shabbatai the Levite helped them. The children of the captivity did so. Ezra the priest, with certain heads of fathers' houses, after their fathers' houses, and all of them by their names, were set apart, and they sat down in the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. They made an end with all the men who had married foreign women by the first day of the first month. Among the sons of the priests there were found those who had married foreign women, namely of the sons of Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and his brothers, Messiah, and Eleazar, and Jerib, and Gedaliah. They gave their hand that they would put away their wives, and being guilty, they offered a ram of the flock for their guilt. Of the sons of Emmer, Hanani, and Zebediah, of the sons of Haram, Maseah, and Elijah, and Shemaiah, and Jahel, and Uzziah, of the sons of Pasher, Elioni, Maseah, Ishmael, Nethanel, Josabad, and Elisha, of the Levites, Josabad, and Shemaiah, and Kaliah, the same as Kalita, Pathiah, Judah, and Eleazar, of the singers, Eliashib, of the porters, Shalom, and Telem, and Uri, of Israel, of the sons of Parash, Ramiah, and Aziah, and Malchijah, and Mijamim, and Eleazar, and Malchijah, and Benaiah, of the sons of Elam, Mataniah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, and Abdi, and Jeremoth, and Elijah, of the sons of Zatu, Elioni, Eliashib, Mataniah, and Jeremoth, and Zabad, and Aziza, of the sons of Bebai, Jehohanan, Hananiah, Zabai, Athlai, of the sons of Bani, Meshalam, Malak, and Adiah, Jashub, and Sheal, Jeremoth, of the sons of Pahath Moab, Adna, and Chalal, Benaiah, Messiah, Mataniah, Bezalel, and Binui, and Manasseh, of the sons of Harim, Eleazar, Ishijah, Malchijah, Shemaiah, Shimeon, Benjamin, Malak, Shemariah, of the sons of Hashem, Matani, Matah, Zabad, Eliphet, Jeremiah, Manasseh, Shemaiah, 
of the sons of Bani, Maadai, Amram, and Uel, Benaiah, Badiah, Chaluhai, Benaiah, Merimoth, Eliashib, Mataniah, Matanai, and Jasu, and Bani, and Benuai, Shimei, and Shelemiah, and Nathan, and Adiah, Machnadabai, Shashai, and Shariah, Azarel, and Shelemiah, Shemariah, Shalom, Amariah, Joseph, of the sons of Nebo, Jael, Mattathiah, Zabad, Zabina, Ido, and Joel, Benaiah. All these had taken foreign wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children. Now there was a certain man in Caesarea, Cornelius by name, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man, and one who feared God with all his house, who gave gifts for the needy generously to the people, and always prayed to God. At about the ninth hour of the day, he clearly saw in a vision an angel of God coming to him, and saying to him, Cornelius. He, fastening his eyes on him, and being frightened, said, What is it, Lord? He said to him, your prayers and your gifts to the needy have gone up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and get Simon, who is surnamed Peter. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of those who waited on him continually. Having explained everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. Now on the next day, as they were on their journey and got close to the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray at about noon. He became hungry and desired to eat, but while they were preparing, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and a certain container descending to him like a great sheet let down by four corners on the earth, in which were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild animals, reptiles, and birds of the sky. A voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. A voice came to him again the second time, What God has cleansed, you must not call unclean. This was done three times, and immediately the vessel was received up into heaven. Now while Peter was very perplexed in himself what the vision which he had seen might mean, behold, the men who were sent by Cornelius, having made inquiry for Simon's house, stood before the gate, and called, and asked whether Simon, who was surnamed Peter, was lodging there. While Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men seek you, but arise, get down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Peter went down to the men and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. Why have you come? They said, Cornelius, a centurion, a righteous man and one who fears God, and well spoken of by all the nation of the Jews, was directed by a holy angel to invite you to his house, and to listen to what you say. So he called them in and lodged them. On the next day Peter arose and went out with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. On the next day they entered into Caesarea. Cornelius was waiting for them, having called together his relatives and his near friends. When it happened that Peter entered, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet, and worshipped him. But Peter raised him up, saying, Stand up! I myself am also a man. As he talked with him, he went in and found many gathered together. He said to them, You yourselves know how it is an unlawful thing for a man who is a Jew to join himself or to come to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I shouldn't call any man unholy or unclean. Therefore also I came without complaint when I was sent for. I asked therefore, Why did you send for me? Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard, and your gifts to the needy are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and summon Simon, who is surnamed Peter. He lodges in the house of Simon a tanner, by the seaside. When he comes, he will speak to you. Therefore I sent to you at once, and it was good of you to come. Now therefore we are all here present in the sight of God, to hear all things that have been commanded you by God. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I perceive that God doesn't show favoritism. 
but in every nation he who fears him and works righteousness is acceptable to him. The word which he sent to the children of Israel, preaching good news of peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, that spoken word you yourselves know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism which John preached. Even Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they also killed, hanging him on a tree. God raised him up the third day and gave him to be revealed, not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen before by God, to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He charged us to preach to the people and to testify that this is he who is appointed by God as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that through his name everyone who believes in him will receive remission of sins. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. They of the circumcision who believed were amazed, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was also poured out on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in other languages and magnifying God. Then Peter answered, Can any man forbid the water, that these who have received the Holy Spirit as well as we should not be baptized? He commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay some days.